I want to show you an idea on how to create more modern sounding jazz lines. The idea is to use triads, but not really triads, not really the generic triads, but more uh, modern sounding triads, little shell voicings, and we're going to use them in our lines. So we need to come up with some of these more modern sounding triads. And first we need to clarify what is a triad. The way I was taught, and this is something I've mentioned in my videos before, is a triad is this, right? It's, it's a three notes major, minor, diminished, or augmented. And that's pretty much it, or that's it. That's the way I was taught. Like those are triads. Some people say, well, it's any three notes. Any three note could be a tri triad, but is this a triad? Those are three different notes. What if it's the same notes? Is that a triad? What constitutes a triad? For me, this is this is our triads. But some people would include the sus two and the sus four in the triad category. Let me know. Do you consider these triads or something else? I mean, it's at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we call it, but let's just agree on something. I think of these as fourth structures. Because those are just inversions of a fourth structure. But already here, right, we are getting into a more modern sounding world, as opposed to But why is that? I mean, of course, you could find these triads in classical music as well, but it's always a very specific context, right? Right, but in more modern music, modal jazz, for example, we use sus structures or uh, fourth structures to create a more modal kind of vibe. So it doesn't give you the same uh, gravity. If I play a major triad, we all know where the root is. But if I play a sus, it's not as clear where the root, the root is. Is it here? Maybe it's here. Right? It, it's not, the tonality is not as obvious. That's why you can move these around. And of course you could uh, use these as lines. That's a little bit of a different topic and I have made a video on fourth structures in the past. And I kind of remember when I was trying to learn how to play jazz, right? You will learn, what, what do we do when we play jazz? We play our scales, and then arpeggios. And we learn to connect them. And we throw in the chromaticism. We learn that stuff, right? But then we go to listen to uh, the players of the day and uh, they do a little bit of that, of course, and it's quite obvious that they know how to do that. The Jonathan Kreisbergs and Logaloons of the world, right? But it doesn't sound like that at all. It sounds like they've added all this other stuff. So we're like, wait, how do I sound like that? And some people make the mistake there that they think, oh, I, that means I shouldn't learn all that bebop stuff and the, the traditional jazz language because they're not playing it. That, that's a mistake, right? Because what they're doing is building from on top of all that stuff. But anyway, I digress as usual. So you go to your teacher and ask, like, okay, so how do I sound more modern? We want to be, I just want to clarify that modern is not the best word because uh, when we say modern jazz, that's a very specific thing, right? Like that's the modern 
jazz quartet is like what the 60s and if we say contemporary jazz well that's something that is always changing so i don't know i don't have the best word for it but i think you know you all know what i mean when i say modern players so what do they do you go to your teacher and ask like how can i sound like that then they will say you know they they're using more fourths and fifths and uh, large intervals maybe that's what's separating those players from the earlier players so here's a modern sounding jazz lick. Like, okay. Sure, that sounds like something Jonathan Kreisberg would play. But then, you you know, you're playing Stella by Starlight or something in your, or, you know. That doesn't make any sense. It just sounds totally out of context because there's a, too much of a gap between the the traditional jazz language and this kind of fourths and quartal structures and fifths and what have you. So I want to find like a happy medium there, a middle ground where you can have a little bit of that large interval fifths, blah, 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 but at the same time, keep the triadic sounds and uh, so you can hear where the harmony is, right? Because if you're going to play a standard in that style with fourths, pentatonics and all that stuff, you have to kind of rearrange uh, everything so to accommodate to this new style. But then it just sounds like, oh, you're playing, uh, you're playing like uh, McCoy, you're doing the McCoy Tyner thing. We should, you should be able to do that stuff. And you should check that stuff out. But that's already kind of dated. And I think players like uh, Mike Marino and those players, they kind of, I, I don't want to, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think they think that that stuff is kind of a little bit dated and not to diminish McCoy Tyner anyway though he's an icon of jazz obviously and you should study that stuff but things have evolved since then okay so I try to move on here so what did we actually do though we took a triad and we just changed the note here for example if I I raised the lowest note so that's what we did so that means I can change it in maybe other ways well, that's also a fourth structure it sounds like Brian Adams or something sorry so what if I change uh, the let's change the middle note Let's uh, raise, it, raise it. Well, then, then I get another generic triad, an E minor. Or augmented. What if I do this? Okay, now we have something that is neither a fourth structure or a generic triad. But it's, I would call this a non-generic triad. And this is what we're looking for. These kinds of shapes is what we're gonna try to use in our new way of playing. So the problem with this is it doesn't have a name. This is a G major triad, first inversion. But what is this? So in this book, it's, it's a little bit... You, the only place where I found this kind of stuff is in this book, right? Uh, creative chordal harmony for guitar using generic modality compression and i have made a video about this book before it's an unbelievable book they have names for these kinds of shapes uh, i think they would call this uh c major seven with no third because it's an inversion of this so here's the thing though if you the way I think about it, it's a G triad with the D drop to C. Because then I can easily find the inversions. I just take a G triad, drop the D to C. Again, here's a great sound. And the, those are the inversions. I think this sounds more like something like Logalum will play, right? I mean, 
mean, it's not super out there or... Right? It could be a Whitney Houston ballad. So this this is not a G, right? It could be anything. It could be uh, a lot of things. It could be some kind of C major 7. It could be any mode from the C major scale or the G major scale, I guess. It could be E minor, flat 6 or D sus. could also be from the C melodic minor, so it could be this. Which is the third mode of C minor major 7. It's actually just the inversion of that, right? C minor major 7. It could be B alter. But it doesn't give you the... Some people say, well, it doesn't give you the, the third and all that stuff. That's, that's why it makes it more modern, <laughs> you know? So you could play them as lines, as chords, or lines. So this might not be the best fingerings, but I'm gonna keep the chordal shapes for now, because it's easier to remember, because this is already going to get pretty confusing. I Obviously you could play... Maybe it's better to play it like that, instead of... If you're going to play it as a line, I mean. But just to keep things somewhat consistent, I'm going to think of them as chords. So you could play them like chords like broken, right? Sorry. top note as a melody. There I was treating it as some kind of F Lydian. So how can we come up with more of these new sounding, nice sounding little shell voicings, non-generic triads. So there's a method that I stumbled upon, and I think you will really like this, that we can use to create these sounds. What we have to do is we have to take, let's take C major 7, good old C major 7, drop to, middle set of strings, C major 7 chords inversions. So I'm kind of assuming that you know the inversions. First inversion, root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. So for the sake of simplicity, let's keep them the same set of strings. But, as I have mentioned in previous videos, we want to think of these as voices rather than shapes for our fingers. We try to get out of the guitar mindset into the, let's say we're arranging for a choir. So there are four voices. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So the technique that I gonna use, which I have also mentioned in previous videos, is to drop one of the voices. You could drop the bass. Aha! Already we have this voicing we just touched upon. I dropped the E and I got, got this. So this is the same thing. With that with no bass. So 
this, that's this is exactly what I'm talking about. You can hear the harmony is still there, but it opens up. So it's not as the harmony is not in your face. It's more open for interpretation, and it opens up for creating new sounds and stuff like that. So maybe you know you could hear this. It's, you know, I'm just experimenting. But as before, when I was playing every note, that it doesn't leave any room for for changing the harmony, if that makes sense. It leaves more for the listener's imagination. So when you do this, you're going to find that half of the voicings or the chords are going to be generic voicings, so E minor. Within this chord, there's a another triad, or there's a triad hiding in plain sight. The E minor. That's why it sounds good to play an E minor triad over C major. And then half are going to be non-generic. That means I can play this kind of voicing as well over C. And then another Another non-generic. This is what that Mick Goodrick, Tim Miller book would call C major seven with no fifth, I think. Also great sound. Love that sound. And then and a generic, just a C major seven the last one, right? Generic, non-generic, non-generic, generic. So if we have a C major, we could play this. Right, so this is what's nice about this is that you're going in and out of familiar sounds with more unusual sounds, more modern sounds with more traditional sounds. As a comparison, if I have a C major triad, like we all know that sound. Absolutely nothing wrong with that sound. But compared to. Oh. The pattern is not as obvious. It's not when I play a triad. Everybody can hear where that is going. And sometimes that's what you want. You this sometimes will play stuff like that because, you know, there's I'm not saying that you shouldn't play triads like that, but this is something else. The pattern is more in disguise, I guess. Okay, so that means you can remove any of the voices you could remove. And I have done a little bit of that in my previous videos. It's a little bit reminiscent of what is in that voicing book I talked about by Brett Wilmot. Okay, so you could drop any voice, right? But the one that I want to look at that I find the most interesting is to drop the soprano. Get that voicing. Which is actually an inversion of this one, right? Yeah. And then this. So non generic, non generic, beautiful voicing. Generic and generic. Remember, two generic and two non generic. Okay, and remember, this could be a lot of things. It could be A minor. It could be F Lydian, etc. So you could play, you know, from the lowest to the highest. Or the opposite. And again, of course, you might find better fingerings for this once you get more used to them. So this is what I love about this. 
if I play when you play that you the ear expects to hear this but it's not that it's So it gives the ear a little bit of a surprise, but we're not totally leaving the the conventional uh, way of doing things. It's it's a little bit of both. That's why I think this is amazing. So now let's uh, add another element to this. We're gonna add some notes. Let's say we're in C Legion when we're doing this. It's kind of like what they're talking about in this book, right? But not quite. So you take it two of those triad shapes and combine them but there's a specific method in this book that I'm not gonna uh, not gonna follow the rules completely here but remember triad pairs right we all know triad pairs something that I love and talked about in my videos let's say we're in C Lydian and play C D triad C triad D triad C triad D triad etc Love that. But now let's take the C triad and swap them with these new little non-generic triads. We can get something like this instead of, I'm gonna play, and then the D triad. And then instead of this, I'm gonna play that one, right? So. how the pattern now is not way less uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, it's the pattern is way less predictable this you know it, it's great you can play those patterns and you should and I love that but it's if you're not careful it can sound very very padding sometimes you want that but if you it's that is all you're doing it's gonna sound like oh it's just predictable and contrived but this, there is a pattern there because I derived everything from a pattern, but it's a pattern in disguise. Okay, so that would be a modern sounding lick right there. Before we use this uh, technique over a tune, just take a moment and think about all the possibilities here. Because this means that I only picked one chord that we derived these from. Just think of, think of all the combinations. You could have a uh, major seven sharp five, major seven flat five. You could take this chord or something like that. And, do this with that there's so much and you know not to mention minor chords and minor seven flat five and some of it's going to be redundant it's going to be the same uh, i like this one take the c major six which is actually a minor right and do the same thing with that okay that's a uh, cool sound but imagine that you master this let's say we're playing Stella by Starlight and the first chord is E minus 7 flat 5 and all you have is this voicing and maybe a few more and you play your Locrian scale there uh -huh. imagine that you could do what I just did over C with the triad pairings with these new shapes and all this new generic uh, non-generic triads and combinations over that chord right then you will be playing on a pretty high level and that is the level that we find uh, people like jonathan kreisberg and uh, you know so again it is a lot of work but for me this is something that i i like exploring and let's look at a tune let's to let's pick uh, 
Maiden Voyage. So all the stuff we just played would work over Maiden Voyage because the first chord is a D sus, which happens to be the same as C Lydian. I real pro Maiden Voyage, and I'm gonna loop the D sus here. So all this stuff I just played. Let's play the whole tune. So we're gonna play D sus, then go to F sus, E flat sus, and then C sharp minor, C Lydian to E flat Lydian, or then D flat Lydian, and then E Lydian. Yeah, that's those are the modes I'm gonna think about. C Lydian, same as D sus, right? To E flat Lydian. So the reason I'm thinking Lydian rather than the Mixolydian is because I'm trying to find these new shapes that I'm just uh, been using. At the end of the day, it shouldn't matter what you're, how you're thinking. It's just it's this, it's all the same, right? C Lydian is the same as D Mixolydian, so it shouldn't matter. So um, this is kind of new. I just discovered this uh, concept, and uh, uh, I need to work on it myself. But uh, uh, that's why I felt like sharing it with you. And uh, yeah. I really hope you can find this information useful and that it wasn't too confusing. So thank you for your time and attention and I shall see you next time.